All right, welcome to New Endings Radio. My name is Darren, and we have our co-host Stacy here. Hello. Stacy, we're going to have to do a little business with our listeners here. Oh, what's that? Well, we have to clarify, first of all, okay. as usual, I am not Dr. Phil. <laughs> no, you are I, not. I know I say that a lot, but I yes. need, need everyone to understand I'm just a guy. Just a guy. And uh, I'm just here to help people get out of denial and try mm-hmm. to do something for themselves. doesn't have to be Celebrate Recovery. It can right. be all different kinds of stuff. There's all different things out there that we'll talk about. We just want to make sure that you do something. And all these guests that we bring on every week, they're all going to have similar situations. Struggles and, yep, stories. That's right. And they're they're going to have a lot of the same feelings that uh, you're right. feeling, you know, uh, depending on what hurt, habit, or hang-up you're dealing with. Basically, they're, all the symptoms are the same. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It's all the same right. types of right. feelings and that yep. kind of thing. So yep. you're going to run across some that uh, are going to relate to you for sure. Mm-hmm. But let's talk a little bit new enders. All right. What is new enders new for those enders. folks out there? There yes. that might not know. <laughs> yes, New Enders is a special club. And a special club. Yes, it is exclusive, I like to call oh, it. Oh, very exclusive. And you can get into this club for $9.76 a month. That sounds reasonable. Now, let me tell you what that gets, other All than right. a sticker. <laughs> Because I will, I will send you a new ender sticker if you okay. if you join. You're going to help someone else because yeah. that's the, these core people that help us with this nine dollars a month. That's what helps keep us on the air. Right. They don't donate airtime to just let people. Any guy that just wants to jump on the radio, come on and just start right. talking. You know, right. it, it takes a lot of work and and there's a lot of people involved. And mm-hmm. Stacy and I do all this, you know, just voluntarily. So I our, love every minute of yes, it. Yes, we do. It's Sharing a lot of fun. Sharing the stories of hope. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But uh, we need your help just keeping it on the air yeah and uh, that's what that nine dollars and 76 cents a month does Mm -hmm. so if you go to our facebook page uh, new endings radio and we have a page and a group so you can go to either one if you go to the group you can get in i open it up to anybody that wants in you don't have to qualify or do anything like that. so that's not exclusive that part is not exclusive. No. <laughs> okay. okay. It, the, the only way you get kicked out of that group is you go in there and say something stupid. Okay. So just don't do that. Just be normal when you go that in there and don't like get it could crazy. That be pretty subjective. Well, too. you know, Facebook. Is, well, some of these people on Facebook are just nutty. Again, we're sharing <clears throat> stories of hope. That's right. Yes. And so don't go on there and be nutty. Okay. okay. Right. Just go on there and say something nice and Positive. encourage everybody. Yeah, right. Exactly. Encouragement. There you go. If you if you're on the page, it's the same thing. There's a uh, posted right at the top. There's a post that uh, has a link on it. And the link takes you right to the page where you can get on and sign up for the new enders. Oh, okay. It's nice and clear, easy to you just click nice the box. Nice and easy, I like that. Yes, and you get on there and you uh, donate nine dollars. And I know there's a lot of people out there that can afford nine dollars and seventy six cents a month. Right. I just bought McDonald's the other day. It was ten dollars and fifteen cents. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I right. know. I know. So I know nine dollars can come to some people. So there's our our first job for yeah. you: is to get on there and help us out there. Now you can also share the podcast because mm-hmm. we we record the show but we also put it on a podcast so right. if you don't hear it on the radio you can go back and listen to all the previous episodes and that mm-hmm. type of thing and a lot of these uh, podcasts are good for maybe somebody that you know that's suffering right. in some certain area you can go through there and pick out one that's good for them and just give it to them you can right. just download the link and send it to them mm-hmm. and uh, you can find us on uh, amazon podcast spotify podbean Apple podcast. So we're all over the place right. on, on the podcast site. Right. So get on there and share those and get the word out and help us spread this word. This show has been extremely popular. I get all kinds of yep. uh, emails all the time saying how much people like it. If you want to send me a specific message, you can go to the yeah. Facebook page or the website, yeah. newendings.online. You can go there and send me a message directly. I, I read every single one of them. So if you'd like to say something, it could be mean, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather it not be. But I wouldn't open you it can, up to that. <laughs> well, you can you can say something if you want. I, I can take criticism, so That's it's true. okay. But you can say some nice things too. But okay. today we have Robert from South Carolina on, and he's going to tell us about a few things in his life he wanted to share with us. Uh, so let's just uh, get right to it. Robert on the Robert, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, nice to have you, Robert. Thank you. All right, let me tell you a little bit about this uh, uh, show, Robert, because we nobody really knows much about you other than the fact that you're Robert from South Carolina. So okay. we want to know a little bit about it because everybody that comes on the show, all the guests, they have something. Usually somebody out there listening can relate to whatever your story mm-hmm. is. It doesn't matter if okay. it's alcohol, drugs, or depression, or anxiety. anxiety. Or... We've had a lot of abuse, you know, mm-hmm. of uh, women, abuse of uh, husbands, and that type of thing. So, yeah. I mean, something out there, someone's going to relate to you. So we kind of okay. like to know what uh, you've been going through. Usually it comes out as a happy ending. I'm assuming that we're going to have a happy <laughs> 
understanding it to hear the it is a it is a radio show of hope remember yeah, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it usually starts off a little rough but we end, right, right. We end up in the right place so in any case why don't you go back a little bit and kind of tell us uh, about a little about your childhood how you grew up um i was when i was born i was born with grandma seizures at 18 hours old and mm. my birth mother put me up for adoption and she was mm. a heroin addict herself Wow. Heroin addict. Okay. Well, was she doing heroin when she was pregnant with you? Do you have any idea of that? I mean, she says no, but like I said, I was born with um, it's a grand mal seizure, so you, right. we we never know. We're well, never gonna know. Well, right? a, lot of, a lot of people aren't gonna no. know. Actually, I don't know that much about it. What grand mal seizures? What exactly is that? It's a, a form of epile- a form of epilepsy, and um, you stop breathing and everything else like that during oh. the episode. Yeah, they're oh. very dangerous. Wow, well, that's yeah, mm-hmm. that's serious. Okay, well, did you ever talk to your uh, birth mother again, or I actually found my birth mother and the birth family about three three years ago. Really? Okay. Anything yes. anything that she could tell you that uh, filled any of the blanks in, or anything like that, or what kind of conversation told, did you have? She told me that she couldn't afford me, uh, couldn't afford me, be, um, because uh, she had three other children. All right. Well, at least your uh, parents, you know, were good and yes. and, and adopted yeah. you at that age. So mm-hmm. that's perfect. So I had to go with uh, your new parents, your adoptive, adoptive parents. Adoptive parents. Yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't I, think of the word. Everything went well. Um, like it, Everything went well growing up with my adopted parents, yes. Okay, good. And do you have any other brothers and sisters? I have a sister um, that is two, two years um, younger than me. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, did your parents have any kids of their own or? They, they they couldn't have my mother couldn't have kids so that's why they adopted me oh. and my sister well that's good that they're adopting you know there's yep. a lot that's of awesome. children out there that are in that situation so mm-hmm. that's that's fantastic mm-hmm. all right so uh pretty young we're talking about seven weeks old so we gotta <laughs> move forward a little bit i guess so anything uh unusual happen in the next few years as you're growing up um when i'm when i was a child when i was a child in my teenage years i got sexually abused by my male cousin oh, oh. okay what would that at your house or his house did he it was at my house. Uh, where were your parents? My parents were in the next room, and it happened in the middle of the night. Did it go on for a while? or It went on probably, I was 13, probably to 16 years old. Wow. wow. Well, that's uh, that's pretty serious. I mean, how, how did that make you feel personally? How did it make me feel personally? Yeah. I was um, angry. I was depressed. Right. I was uh, um about my sexuality, I thought I was, I was gay at that point in my mm-hmm. life. and Confused, right? Confused, yeah. Yeah, how about that? Uh, um, did you ever talk to your parents about it, or I told my parents um, later in life. I never told them. No, oh, so you kept it kind of bottled up inside. So that's yeah. You probably stayed angry for a while then. For a while, yeah. Right, right. So you're you're in high school now at this point, I guess. And uh, you said it went on from 13 to 16. What what made it stop all of a sudden? We it just stopped. I mean, we just uh, never saw each other really up to sixteen, and it just so he yeah. never got in trouble or anything like that. No, no. Okay, wow. all right. Okay, all right. So you're in high school, and uh, um, how'd your high school days go? How my high school days go? Um, like I said, I was born with grandma seizures, and I always had special needs, and I was doing mm-hmm. special needs classes, and I got mm-hmm. picked on and bullied. Wow. Okay, like physical abuse or mental? Abuse? I think that um, men- mental and physical. The- the bully just used to punch me and all that stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. That's not good. Dude. No. All right. So. Um, did you tell your parents? Did I tell my parents? I told them when I was older. Okay. okay. So they didn't know you were bullied or sexually abused yeah. until you're a little bit older. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you made it through high school. I guess you graduated. I graduated. Yes. Okay. Super. And then, and what happened after? Did you go to college or did you go to work? What happened there? I, I, I about twenty years old. I um, started with the uh, work was working for the U.S. Navy as a civilian. Okay. Really? Okay. So, what were you doing for them? I was a laborer, just a jack of all trades, doing anything. I mean, okay. construction. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Robert. We're going to take a short break here, and okay. uh, when we come back, we want to hear a little bit more about uh, what was going on in the Navy. All right, so we'll be back here in just a few minutes with Robert from South Carolina. Hi, this is Darren, your host for New Endings Radio. Here on New Endings Radio, we talk about all of life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Every week, we talk to real people with real struggles. We hear about what life experiences led them to reaching the breaking point and finally reaching out for help. We hear how they overcame denial and how Celebrate Recovery and their true higher power, Jesus Christ, helped them get their life back. Celebrate Recovery is not all about alcohol and drugs. There are many things in life that keep us held down. All of our hurts, habits, and hang-ups keep us from being the people we were meant to be. 
Celebrate Recovery helps us break those chains that keep us down and deal with our denial. For those of you on the fence that know you have an issue but think you're the only one, listen to how these people had the same feelings you do. Then get yourself over the fear to change. We can all change, but no one can make you change. You have to do it for yourself. No one else can do it for you. Okay, welcome back to New Endings Radio. We're talking to uh, Robert from South Carolina. Yeah. And he's tell, told us a little bit about his uh, childhood and that type of thing. And grandma seizures. Which grand mal seizures. Grand, oh, I thought it was grandma, like grandma. Are grandpa. you kidding me no. right now? <laughs> oh, grand mal. Grand mal. Well, there you go. That's that's why I'm not a doctor. And that's why you say Ooh. I'm the smart one. That's right. <laughs> I know. I'm just a guy. Yes, I'm you just are. A guy. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, here, there you go. I learned something today, Robert. How about that? <laughs> All right. Well, Robert, uh, we, we went through, you had a, a little bit of abuse and that type of thing when you were a little bit younger, but you ended up graduating high school and you're you're working for the Navy now, doing some uh, laboring uh, jobs and that type of thing. Yes. Are, are you married at the time? Um, I got married at, got married like probably six months after I got the, the, the Navy job. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. at the 20th. Yeah. All okay. right. Where'd you meet that way? I actually met it. It was actually a family friend of my father at that point. Oh, okay. good. Good. Okay. And what was what was she doing at the time when you were working for the Navy? What was she doing? She was on Social Security Disability. Did uh, she have any schooling or college or anything? Yeah. She went to Villanova University with a psychology degree. Villanova oh. with a psychology degree. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did she use that degree in any way? or No, she didn't use it, no. All right. So uh, how'd that marriage go? How, how'd you guys get along? Uh, how did we get along? We never... I'll tell you the truth, we never we never got along and everything else like that. We used to fight. She used to say a lot of words that I mean, she used to like mentally abuse me, say like oh. there was times emotional and physical, I mean. So she was real controlling then or she was real controlling, yes. Okay. So she kinda ran the show basically. Basically, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's not that's not good. So, but she knew about your issues beforehand, right? Yes. Well, she's on social uh, security, so she has some issues of her own then. Physically, she had, she physically she was um had um lupus and fibromyalgia and stuff like that. Probably okay. more now. Oh, okay. So she knows what it's like to be have disabilities. Yes. But she was verbally abusing you and and making yes. fun of you. Is that more or yes. less what it was? Really? Huh. How do you like that? So uh, I guess that would cause a few fights, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah, that would that would do it. Now we know how you felt about yourself. Uh, you know, as you're growing up with the abuse and that type of thing. So this couldn't have made made you feel much better. I know it didn't, it didn't make me feel much better. I was um, very depressed. I mm-hmm. I was very my anxiety was very high at that point. I used to even eat my own clothes, and then at that point, that's how stressful. Eat your own what? My own clothes and my t-shirts and stuff like that. Just like to relieve anxiety. To relieve anxiety. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Did by any chance, Robert? Did you tell your wife about your past sexual abuse and bullying and all that when you were in high school? Um, I told her, I actually, she made, when, when we were together, she made me go into counseling. She actually went inside the counseling thing and I came out then. Okay. So you went to counseling together? Yeah, together. And I came out, I was sexually abused then. Okay. But she has a psychology degree. Right. Yes. Okay. So Mm -hmm. I wonder. What is your question? I don't know exactly. (laughs) I just just think it's interesting. She has a psychology degree and they're in a. In a, hey, you know, therapists and psychologists can have problems well, too, and everybody that, but, needs help. But you'd think sometimes. that you'd think that she wouldn't, uh, right? Abuse and right. mentally abuse, right? Like that. Yeah, I think that's what you're getting degree, at. You're that trying that be the to, first thing you right. learn in psychology school is don't right. treat people like that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're trying to tiptoe okay. around that. Just, yeah, yeah just that could say be. It. Maybe I just want to say something yeah. mean, and I shouldn't. Yeah, so, all right, right, All right. Well, in any case, all right. So, how long the did the marriage go on? I was married in 2008, and um, the, I've been separated for four years, so I was probably 2017 we separated. Wow, okay. that's All a right. long time. Well, why, yes. you know, if she was uh, abusive and, and mentally abusive and that type of thing, why did you why did you hang on so long? Why did I hang on so long? Because I um, was taking care of her and her mother at the same time. Her mother was in a wheel. Her mother was in a wheelchair, and they both were disabled. And I would have felt horrible for leaving. Mm-hmm. And, oh. oh. Okay. Well, so her mother's living with you also? 
Her, yeah, I lived at her my mother-in-law's house. Yes. Okay, so it was you and uh, the wife and and the mother-in-law. So you were taking yeah. care of everybody. You were the man of the house, and you'd feel guilty if you left him. I can understand that. Yeah. So you just kind of dealt with it. Just to, wow. Yeah. That sounds and, similar. And held it in. Held yeah. everything in. Yeah. That yeah. sounds very similar to to uh, marriage problems when they have kids and they just hold the marriage together because of the children. Yeah. Right. You know? right. So it's kind of the same. Yeah, exactly. Same deal. And it sounds like not only was um you know that mental and th- that abuse going on, but also some you know codependency, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I got you. Okay. So, um, so you worked for the Navy for how long did you work for the Navy there? I worked, I worked for the Navy from, how did it be? Yeah. 2000, 2007. Yeah. Then to 2000, actually 6, 16, 16. Okay, so, yeah. So you were with the, uh, Navy for about 10 years. And, yeah. uh, what'd you do after that then? I didn't do, I didn't, I, um, we got, I got separated from my wife after, after my um I had a car accident and then oh she oh, threw, okay and right. she threw me out two weeks after that okay well let's let's back, let's back up a little bit um, sorry so that, no that's all right I just want to know more about this car accident what what happened what happened they said I my my wife at the time said I had a seizure but I didn't I actually fell asleep at the wheel because oh. I was never asleep I was never sleeping oh. oh I see okay from the stress and stuff or. The stress and stuff wow. like that, yeah. Oh, I see. So you fell asleep at the wheel and it, you ran into somebody or? Yeah, I ran into somebody, oh, yes. Boy. Was it serious? I mean, did you get injured in that? I actually had shoulder, thir- I, tore, I tore something on my shoulder and I hurt my foot at that time. I never had surgery, but I just had it on my shoulder. But you did have some surgery, it sounds like you said, yes. right? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, so, so shoulder surgery. Okay, so you, you have the bad car accident, you, you have surgery for that, and then your w- wife kicks you out? Four weeks. Yep. Wow. Four weeks after your surgery. I didn't even get the physical therapy yet. No. Wow. Well, why would she do something like that all of a sudden? I don't really know, but I know she was talking to another person while we were together. I was staying in the house too. So she, she was um, talking to another person at the house or online. Oh, online. She, so she was online and, and met somebody online. Yeah. So she was, she was in some sort of a online relationship or something. Yes. I see. Okay. And so, well, then who was going to take care of her mother once you left? I mean, you were worried that about time, that the whole time, and then she threw you out. That, her, her, mother actually you passed, her mother actually passed away, and then oh, she threw me. Oh, I oh gotcha. okay. Good grief. Yeah. All right. Heck, oh boy. All right. So, uh, so Robert, she threw, I'm going to tell you something right now, and all the listeners yeah. out there, very rarely is Darren speechless. I, <laughs> and he just I, Sometimes they just hit you, and you think, what is wrong with people? <laughs> you know, you just, yeah. that's what you think. Yeah, it's just crazy. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to regroup, Robert. <laughs> he needs we're going to, we're going to take a short break <laughs> here and uh, I'm going to regroup and we're going to come back in just a few minutes and let's find out what happened after, after she let's threw get, you out. Get to the day. good part. Okay. Yeah. We've got to get some happy stuff in here. Robert, yeah, so. absolutely. So we'll be right back after this. Okay. This is your host, Darren, and I've got some good news for you. We've created a great opportunity for you to help people right from your couch. I know a lot of you out there talk about how you want to help people change their lives, but things just get in the way with everything going on in our own lives. Well, now you can help by giving $9.76 each month by becoming a New Ender. The New Ender Club is made up of our faithful listeners, those people who keep this show on the air. Go to our Facebook page, New Endings Radio, and the very first post you see is your opportunity to help someone. By joining this exclusive club, you could be helping one more person out of denial or keep someone from taking their own life or abusing their spouse or child. This is certainly worth $9.76. Do your part and go to our website, newendings.online, or go to our Facebook page, New Endings Radio, and help someone now. All right, welcome back to New Endings Radio. We're talking to Robert from uh, South Carolina, and uh, he's been telling us quite a bit. And he, the last segment did leave me speechless. Yeah, Stacey, you yeah. were you were correct. I, I just sometimes <laughs> you just can't believe. You, I've not, you, like I said, I've not seen him like that, and uh, with talking to anybody, and he he has regrouped. <laughs> well, it's just that we haven't heard a whole lot of stories like this. You right, know, we hear this a lot is very the, different. We hear a lot of, and I say common, but you know, the, a lot of the uh, stories we hear are, are not the same, but the same situation right, and that right. type of thing. And this is just very unusual, and it just kind of makes me feel bad. To tell you the <laughs> yeah, truth, you know? yeah. So, We're going to get to the good part. All right, so that's what the show's all about. You got out of the car accident. Your wife throws you out of the house, and then, so where did you stay when you left there, Robert? 
Um, I actually went to my um, my aunt's house, and then I didn't like it there. Then I went to my birth brother's house. So for, how long uh, were you at your aunt's house? Not probably a couple of days. Not that, oh, not that long. Sure. Okay. What was it that you didn't like that made you leave after a couple of days? I think I I really think I was really mad at the at the world at that point and i can't I was just imagine why out. robert <laughs> <laughs> i know all right so you just mad at the world and you thought okay well this isn't going to work so, so i went to my brother's yes your brother's so is this locally where you were at or were you have to move across country or what was going on uh, it was about 20 minutes from where oh, okay where, uh, okay yeah so it's close by so you, you moved in with your brother bro- yes. brother right. okay did we didn't talk about a brother before did we no who is this where, this is it, where did the brother come from robert Oh, I, I moved. I, where did I come from? That was my birth brother. I oh, was, uh, for, okay, yeah, your birth so. brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was adopted by a different family. He said, uh, "My birth brother was, was my same mother." So he, we had. She, I have three brothers. So she was the right. same. Okay. Did he get adopted also when he was young? No. He did. Oh, no. Okay. He stayed with your mother, your birth yeah. mother. Oh, and so you guys met up again. Well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so then you go to stay with him. So, all right. Well, that's interesting. Uh, how long did you live with him? I lived about six six months with him. And then he had a child. That t- oh, yeah, a child, my niece. And he said he couldn't af- I couldn't afford to live with me, him. He oh, couldn't afford me to live with him. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so he asked you to leave. And then I moved to my cousin in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Think- okay. It's not the same cousin that was. No. Okay. All right. That's okay. good. Okay. Good. All right. So you move into cousin. How long were you with your cousin in Pennsylvania? I would probably be about another six months, and then I um, moved to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Well, how did how to go with your uh, cousin for those six months? Uh, she, everything went well, fine. She treated me well. She she was one of the most best. She probably actually helped me. Oh, well, that's I nice. mean, yeah. So did she have a family or? She has what five five kids. So five I lived, kids. I wow. Yeah. Okay, go. She might have needed the help to have you there. Right, five right. Kids. Five kids. <laughs> All right. So you stay with her. Would she go into church? I mean, any of these family members, any church but goers? They weren't going to church then. No. Okay. No. Oh, okay. So after a few months, now you left your cousin's house. Was that her decision, your decision, or joint decision? Um, it was. I I thought that we needed a better just to get away from the whole situation from my ex. So I just went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina where my uh, parents live. I got it, just okay. to get farther away. Okay. So yeah. you went back to to live with your parents. Um, yeah. so, all right. So you get back there, and how long have you been with your, your parents now? I'm trying to get a time, uh, now, time on um, Now I've been down in Myrtle Beach, what, three or four years. All right, so you've now. been there okay. quite a while. Okay, yeah. so when you get back with, with them, did you go back to work when you got back with your parents? or? I tried to look for work. I just I, I was having problems finding work, and um, then my father said to me, "Oh, look, he wanted to help me, so he sent me. Oh, let's go to this church. I know it's called Beach Church." Oh, that's okay. That's kind of out of the blue. So you guys started going to church. Was your dad going to that church, or he brought me there? One, he brought me there actually to church. Oh, show. okay, okay. So you go to church. Um, what happened when you got there? What happened to church? I actually saw a sermon on um, failure, actually, and it just hit me and i felt like a failure at that time and wow so you're f- feeling pretty low about yourself at this point i guess huh? yes okay i'm assuming at some point that you got involved in celebrate recovery right after the, the failure segment i um went to celebrate recovery that next friday oh okay so you heard Great. the sermon on failure you thought i got to do something about this Yes. Okay, I got awesome. you. Uh, well, Celebrate Recovery is a great place to do that because it's not all about alcohol and drugs. No. Nope. Yeah. No, it's not. So you went there for basically depression and feeling down on yourself and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. All right, so you show up at Celebrate Recovery. Tell me about that first day you went into Celebrate Recovery. The first day of Celebrate Recovery actually was amazing. I felt yeah. welcome. That I, I felt like a family. I felt like a family. All right. Excellent. That's a part of something. That's yeah. celebrating even because yeah. everybody's there working on different issues and, you know, everybody's, you know, kind of in the same boat. There's a lot of people that look at the people down to Celebrate Recovery and they call them those people down there. Right. They have problems. Right. 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 When you get down to Celebrate Recovery and you realize you're like everybody else, then everything seems to go a lot smoother. <laughs> so all exactly. those people on the outside, they're talking about those people. 
Guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're those people. There are those people. <laughs> <laughs> you get started in in celebrate recovery, and uh, you went uh, through some step studies, I guess, by now. I've been done three step studies since I've been in um, nice. celebrate recovery. For, for those that uh, listening that don't know what a step study is, we use some of the CR lingo. A step study is going through the twelve steps at Celebrate Recovery. They do them a little bit different. If you've ever been to an AA meeting before, uh, you do the twelve steps, but you do them with you know you and a sponsor, and it's kind of an individual thing. At Celebrate Recovery, we do it all as a group, all together. There'll be five, six, seven people in the group, either men or women. They're separate. Uh, we go through the whole steps, but our true higher power at Celebrate Recovery is Jesus Christ. So yes. that's a little bit different than some Absolutely. of the secular programs. So. When you went through the uh, step study, what did you learn about yourself? I, I learned that I was in severe denial, um, learned how angry of a person I was, and I mean, how depressed I really was. Well, did, did it help your anger? Oh, it helped my anger tremendously. I'm a different right. person now. Okay. What about, you know, healing from all that abuse as a child, through your marriage, through high oh, school? I was very healed from all, all that I, I mean, okay. all I went through, yeah. Work through all that. Did it, yeah, I worked all through all of it. Did it help you to just let things go and not let them eat at you so much? Yes, it helped me to let things go, and I just felt like a totally different person. Right. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Amazing, yeah. So you've been going there a long time. Did you get into yes. uh, into leadership or anything like that? I got into leadership through Celebrate Recovery, yes. Nice. Okay. What What are you doing for them? I actually have to my testimony seven times. For seven Celebrate times. Recovery. Nice. <laughs> you know, those this testimonies year. are celebrate recovery they do a, a lesson one week and then a testimony the next week so every other week when you go to a meeting you hear a testimony of some sort mm-hmm. i i don't think i've ever heard a testimony that hasn't affected me in some way that i related right. to me too so going out and giving me your too. testimony is a, a big deal it is you know? it is. and people love to hear the story because they know that they're not alone mm-hmm. you know that's the whole purpose of this show is to show people that uh, they're not the only ones and so, you know, that's that's great that you're out there sharing that stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. Did you lead any small groups or anything like that? I've led small groups, yes. Oh, okay, good. So you're pretty involved in Celebrate Recovery. Yes. Well, that's good. And that's uh, Beach Church in Beach Church in, in Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. Beach. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll have to remember that. So mm-hmm. how many people are in your Celebrate Recovery? Um, I'd probably about 100. I think they'd probably get 150 a night. I, I would, oh, they were before. I mean, wow, you, Before, got a, yeah. you have a big group. That's, That's a nice. great size group. Yeah, yeah. How about that. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Robert, it was really nice talking to you. Absolutely. Thank you. We, we thank you for opening up and, you know, just being honest with everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and I know somebody out there is going to relate in some way okay. uh, to you. So we really appreciate your time. And, All right. And we thank you for coming. And everyone else, be here next week and uh, with another person with another issue that probably relates to mm-hmm. you out there somewhere. So see you next week here on New Endings Radio. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. We like to end each week with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next.